Let's go down to Rome. So your Minnesota Fighting Vikings will have some uh, cap gymnastics to do uh, this offseason. Now the Vikings currently, as of right Meow have just south of thirty million bucks in cap space per spot rack. Now th they could certainly adjust things uh, if Kirk Cousins resigns. Uh, his uh, twenty eight point five million dollar board year cap hit uh, could dissipate depending on how they structure an extension. Uh, same thing with Justin Jefferson coming off his fifth year option. Uh, and th there's lots of ways that the Vikings can save money and also be players in free agency as well as take care uh, of their own. You know, extending Justin Jefferson, potentially extending Daniel Hunter, Kirk Cousins, uh, Darius. Etc. But there's a couple of players that could be cap casualties. Now the the list is pretty thin, and also it, there's a couple of players on here wh who probably aren't going anywhere, and that's a good thing. You know, looking at Harrison Phillips, uh, looking at Byron Murphy Jr. specifically, and the reason why the list is small is because Quasi and uh, and company have done a very good job the last two off seasons, really trimming the fat of some of the older veterans uh, that were on and some not so great contracts. Because you look at Anthony Barr uh, getting punted in Quasi's first off season, and then look. You look last year uh, at Kendricks and Dalvin and Patrick Peterson, uh, as well as uh, Adam Thielen. And at, at the time, it's just like, hey, you're getting rid of all these luminaries, but it really is simplifying the cap situation going forward and really streamlining things. And that's the reason why the Vikings don't find themselves in cap hell, uh, even though they are taking on void year and dead cap hits uh, for Kirko uh, and Daniil. But that's why they're not, uh, they don't have their ass in the jackpot like the Buffalo Bills or especially the New Orleans Saints. Again, that's why uh, things are very smart with Rob Brzezinski and company because all right so here they, here we go five potential salary cap casualties and again th this list is thin and a lot of these guys aren't saving a lot of cap, and that's by design. Uh, this has been a very well-structured uh, roster in terms of uh, cap revision over the last couple of years, uh, thanks to Quasi and Brzezinski. But uh, up at the top, yes, it is Harrison Smith. And I, I think that you know, Harrison obviously took a, a massive pay cut last season, almost 50%. Uh, and I, I think that if he said no, I think he obviously would have been gone. But now he came back he, and... The thing about Harrison is that he didn't play bad this year. Like, like he played solid. Now, was he peak 2017 Harrison Smith? No. Uh, obviously not. But uh, Harrison had 83 tackles, three sacks, all of them in the Panthers game. Uh, two tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, and uh, three passes broken up. And he, he still had a role uh, in the Flores defense because – they they did run multiple safeties. Josh Metellus was a jack of all trades out there. Cam Beasy really rising up at free safety. So Harrison played some good ball, but it, it could be a spot where I, I I think Harrison Smith will give serious thought to retiring. Uh, I think that his shoulder issue is probably a little bit worse than he led on in the media. And I think that Harrison, I mean, he's got a family now. He's got interests outside the game. I think that he could hang them up. And he is due a $19.2 million uh, cap charge. Uh, and with $7.8 million dead, the Vikings could free up just north of $11 million bucks in space if he retires or if he's cut. Uh, he has a $14.45 million base salary. None of it is guaranteed uh, at any point during the offseason. So, you know, the Vikings can take their time. And you know, like we said, since there's no part of his base that's going to become triggered or guaranteed throughout the offseason, it could be a spot where Harrison, uh, he, he could take all summer. He could go through OTAs. He could, he could go through all the way up to training camp and decide whether he's going to be back or not. And I don't think it would be any skin off the nose uh, of the Vikings. And you know they could free up that $11 million in space by letting him go at any time. Next up is Harrison Phillips. Now, horrible Harry was a stud this year. And also, he's only 27. I mean, look at Harrison Phillips. is like, oh, man, that guy's like mid-30s. Cool dude. Uh, go uh, go grab a beer and, and some wings with him. But uh, Harrison Phillips was great uh, on the interior. But like we said this a bunch, I think he's playing out of position uh, since the Vikings moved to a three-man front. But uh, he is uh, due a $8.3 million base salary. Uh, 4.5 of it is uh, becomes fully guaranteed on the third day of the new league year. Again, Third day of the new league year is an important term uh, in terms of the offseason. Uh, but uh, the Vikings, if they did move on, I don't think they will. Like, I, I don't think that they'll move on for Phillips or Murph because <laughs> they're frankly two of the, the Vikings' better defenders. Uh, but if they move on from Phillips, uh, you'd only have $2.33 million dead uh, before the third day of the new league year, freeing up $6.5 in cap space. But no, I mean, Phillips has been great. 
I think it's a spot where if you do bring in a true nose tackle and allow Phillips to play a more four tech, five tech, maybe some three tech on four man fronts, I think that would be uh, that would, that would be the best case. Uh, but yeah, ninety three tackles, thirty nine stops, both were leading uh, the league in terms of defensive interior players, uh, and also had a three sacks and twenty one pressures. So horrible Harry was pretty damn good in twenty twenty three. Also, I mean, he he could be a, a guy that's el- that uh, you look for a, an extension. Hmm. Uh, Byron Murphy Jr., so uh, former Arizona Cardinal, uh, came in, signed a two-year deal. Uh, he is only 26, had three picks, 13 passes bro- broken up, and you saw towards the end of the season uh, when he was out with an injury, the, the Vikings defense really fell apart in the two game against the Lions and also the game against the Packers. But uh, Murphy uh, has a $10.16 million cap hit. $5.6 million of it is dead. Uh, they could free up uh, uh, just over $4.5 million bucks, uh, but Again, I don't think that they will. Uh, but like we said, the, the fact that this list isn't long <laughs> means that uh, Kwesi and Brzezinski have managed uh, the roster extremely well. And then the last two. So Bradbury. Bradbury is interesting where obviously he fits in the culture. He's loved and respected in the locker room. Uh, and uh, he's when he's out there, he's great. Not only, not only is he above average center, but also... You look at his leadership. You look at him making line calls, and you know he, he's solid. But uh, he's 28. Uh, he does have a 5.76 million dollar cap hit. Uh, the Vikings could free up uh, just north of four million in cap space if they cut or traded him. Uh, but uh, his 4.9 million dollar base salary becomes fully guaranteed on the third day of the new league year. Uh, he was 22nd in the league uh, in terms of PFF grades last season. 18th in pass blocking, gave up 22 pressures and three sacks. But I don't know. Uh, I think that he will return uh, since Chris Cooper and Kevin O'Connell and company are, are still in power. But I don't know. It's like, just like we're, we're waiting for him to turn a corner. It's like, hey, the undersized uber athletic center. Like when are you going to turn into Jason Kelsey? You know, the good Kelsey brother. I don't know. I don't know, man. But maybe we should just get back to having 330 pound dudes up front. Just between guard, center, guard, having a thousand pounds of man. <laughs> Which which would be a great be a great band name or a bar name. Hmm. Uh, then lastly, Dean Lowry. I think Lowry's gone. So uh, twenty nine years young. Uh, he's got a four point four eight million dollar cap hit. Uh, they can free up uh, just north of two million bucks if they move on from him. Uh, he also has a couple void years added onto his deal. Uh, but he has a three point seven uh, million dollar base salary guaranteed on the third day of the new league year. Nine games played, four starts, fourteen tackles, four pressures, zero goose egg. D'Angelo Russell sacks. It was just. It just wasn't good, right? And you know, one of the big reasons why is like, hey, how come the Vikings defensive line wasn't getting a pass rush? Well, Harrison Phillips, anything, any pass rush you get from him is a bonus. Uh, same thing with Jonathan Bullard, who's more uh, more of a run guy, and Lowry has passed his prime. Uh, but, I mean, that's one of the reasons why. That's why the Vikings need to retool things up front, and as well as, uh, I think, move out from Lowry, freeze up a roster spot, freeze up a couple million bucks against the cap, uh, and you're good to go. So, uh, I think that you know, Phillips, Murphy definitely need to be back. I, I think Phillips could potentially even be extended. Uh, Bradbury is probably going to be sticking around because of the regime. I, I think Harrison is either cut or retires. I, you know, barring a massive pay cut, I, I don't see a path for twenty two being back in twenty four. Sucks to say, but it is what it is. Uh, and, and Lowry, Lowry gone. That's all. Uh, but that's it. Uh, oh, also, if the Vikings cut Alexander Madison, they can save like six hundred k. I don't think they're going to do that with four million dead. Nah. Uh, but that's it. Five potential salary cap casualties for the Minnesota Fine Vikings. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But till next time, Skull Production Value. 